Kim, what's on your radar? All right, well, this might seem like deja vu a little bit for some of you who might have caught uh, me actually doing this similar radar. Uh, how long ago was it? Because we were we were off for a little bit, so uh, like you know, seven days ago or so. Um, but I've corrected the math on this one. For those of you that did catch it, we did take that radar down <laughs> in full disclosure. So this one is a repeat, but with the appropriate math. So bear with me if you've already seen this. Um, it is corrected now. So on March 1st, the FDA released the first round of thousands of pages of data submitted by Pfizer for review of their COVID-19 vaccine. And originally, the documents were going to take 55 years to be released, but because of a court order, we'll get all of the documents by year's end. Now, before we get to the documents, let me first explain why we're getting these in a much more timely manner. Now, back in August, a group called Public Health and Medical Professionals for Transparency filed a Freedom of Information Act request seeking to see the nearly 330,000 pages of data Pfizer submitted to the FDA for authorization and then later approval of their COVID-19 vaccine. The FDA had on the request and said they could release the documents, but very, very slowly, as in 500 pages per month. This meant it would take 55 years to get all of the 330,000 pages. Most of us will be dead by then. The FDA claimed the reason for this delay is that it's a lot of pages for them to go through and that redacting the necessary proprietary information would be burdensome. The FDA also claimed there wasn't a need to speed up the release of the data because there wasn't a, quote, compelling need that involves an imminent threat to the life or physical safety of an individual, and that there was no real urgency to inform the public concerning actual or alleged federal government activity. Well, a federal judge disagreed, and the court said the pandemic is actually a pretty big and urgent deal. And since the FDA managed to go through the data within weeks to give Pfizer full approval, the FDA can manage to release the data to the public within months. So in late January, the judge ruled the FDA needs to release the hundreds of thousands of pages on a per month schedule. The schedule being 10,000 pages per month, uh, 10,000 pages March 1st, another 10,000 pages April 1st, 80,000 pages on the first of each month of May, June, and July, 70,000 pages by August 1st, and then 55,000 pages by the first business, uh, first business day of each month until all pages are released. So rather than getting the complete packet of documents in 55 years, we're going to see the data by the end of this calendar year. So on the first of this month, the scientists received and published on their website the first 10,000 pages they received. So what's in them? Well, this is the big question everyone is asking, but because there are so many pages to go through, it's going to take researchers some time, not to mention the court didn't specify which order the documents need to be released in. So my guess is if there's anything too damning, it won't be released until much later in the year. But there's one document that's gone absolutely viral on social media. People think it's part of this data dump, but actually it's not from this batch, but from documents obtained by the group back in November. And you might have seen or heard about these pages in the past several days. These are nine pages of side effects people reported after getting Pfizer's vaccine. That's a lot of side effects. And these aren't all of them. These are just the ones Pfizer scientists determined to be what they call special interest. Now, a special interest side effect is one scientists think could possibly be re related to the product, but it might not be, so it requires more data collection and investigation. None of the side effects listed in this document are confirmed to be a result of the vaccine. Some side effects in this document are mild, such as soreness, mild fever, or nausea. Others are severe, including various heart and circulatory problems, such as myocarditis and blood clotting, or various nervous system disorders. The document says there were 42,086 case reports between December 1st, 2020 and the following February 28th, 2021. These reports contained a total of 158,893 events, meaning each person on average reported three to four different side effects. Now, these reports come from the government reporting system bears, reports directly to Pfizer, as well as other reporting systems. And the document admits that reporting is voluntary and the magnitude of underreporting is unknown. According to the document, there were 1,223 uh, 1, fatalities. Again, none of this is verified to be directly related to the vaccine, but those who reported likely believed it was. And this is one of the reasons the document has gone viral. However, some people are misreading this data and thinking that 42,083 number represents the number of people in a trial rather than that being the number of cases filed. They then see the numbers listed by each side effect and they're thinking the rate of occurrence is much higher than it really is. So let's talk about the rate of occurrence. The document lists the official number of Pfizer vaccine doses distributed in the three-month time period, but it's redacted. 
However, we can guesstimate by looking at each country listed in the document and finding the data through the, through the Our World in Data website. So between December 1st, 2020 and February 28th of 2021, there were about 29 million doses of Pfizer COVID vaccine administered in the European Union and 39 million administered in the United States. At this early point in the vaccine rollout, there were very few other countries who had received it, and Israel seems to be excluded from this document for some reason. Now, even if you do include the 5 million Israelis who had received at least one or even two doses by this point, we're guesstimating the number to be something like 80 million doses. Each person needs two doses, so that 80 million reduces somewhat. Some people will have had two doses in that three-month time period, others hadn't, so it's hard to say how many in each group. But for the sake of argument, let's just say 80 million people took at least one dose of the vaccine, though this number is surely lower. Now, 42,083 unique reports of special side effects of interest out of 80 million people is a rate of one in 1900. And this is just in the first three months of the vaccine rollout before many people were even aware of VAERS. Most of the reports were in people aged 31 to 50 years old. Now, granted, not all of these reported side effects are actually related to the vaccine. Many of them may just be coincidental, but also Pfizer admits the number of reported side effects could be low because the reporting system is voluntary. Anecdotally, I know several people, myself, who had side effects who sought medical care yet never reported the side effect to VAERS or any other reporting system. And there's a reason for that. A lot of people who claimed they had some sort of issue were demonized, ostracized, and censored. They were told they were wrong, making it up in anti-science. Meanwhile, the government, schools, and employers demanded everyone, regardless of their age or medical history, take the vaccines or lose their jobs and social life. All of this was happening while thousands upon thousands of people made these reports. Informed consent is a fundamental principle in a democratic society made up of a free people. So is scientific debate. Yet a lot of this was lost during this pandemic. Now, getting the vaccine out there was a good thing for a lot of older adults who were high risk for negative COVID outcomes. The vaccine saved lives. But the science wasn't and isn't settled. We're still learning about how well these vaccines even work in children. We're still learning about which dosage and what intervals cause myocarditis in young men. There's a lot we don't know. But we know even less when the documents are hidden or, missing, or information is being suppressed for one reason or another. So we still are going through all of these 10,000 pages that were just dumped. Um, there were a few things that people have learned so far, like Pfizer paid nearly $3 million to the FDA as like their, um, their user fee. Uh, there was a few other things that, were, that have been uncovered so far, but 10,000 pages is a lot to go through. And of course, we get another 10,000 pages April 1st, and then we get all these other you know, hundreds of thousands of pages in the next couple of months. So there's a lot of data to go through. Transparency is a good thing. People are finally getting it. Um, but what will we learn? Unclear, right. you know, and will people care by then? You know, it's also just going to be so hard to sort out. And right, so they have some indication that maybe in these cases these were genuine side effects of the vaccine. Yeah. With so many millions of people taking it, you know, and and also many elderly people taking it who you know might then just have had health problems or right. be having health problems, normal health problems, or just things that other people experience. So connecting it to the vaccine and. and and certainly probably in some number of cases, maybe a very small number of cases, there maybe there is some connection, but it's just so hard to know and to tell, I think. Well, unless they do more research. Yeah. Right. I think they do need to do more research on this. And what, what, what your point here is a good corrective to is you saw a lot of people saying, look, there's 10,000 pages of side effects to this vaccine. Well, no. Well, nine pages on that. On okay. that. <laughs> nine pages of side nine Not pages 10,000. Nine pages of side yeah. effects of listed thousands and thousands and thousands. Of, well, no, no, no. That's, that's not accurate. What, the way you described it is, is accurate, that this is a list of all of the side effects that people reported having right. experienced at some point after the vaccine. I, I know people that had, that had serious side effects. It's virtually impossible to say, here's the side effect that I had. Can you do some sort of test and prove? Right. Like, no doctor is going to, I mean, you could, you know, if you had enough money and you just, you know, you, then you could probably find somebody who'd run a, a, mil, a massive battery of tests to try to figure that out. But like, if you had, uh, you know, if you had a fever the next day, like, okay, now we're close. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's a side effect of the vaccine. And so it becomes a spectrum. At what point can you point to a, a malady and connect it to the vaccine? And I tend to trust people when they come up with these judgments. And, and I've, I've heard of plenty of instances of it to raise enough alarms that it should be studied. Mm -hmm. But in the overall context, the number of people who were prevented from being hospitalized and prevented to be, uh, from, from dying, right. I th so far, it seems to massively outweigh that. Right. 
this well, is why they're going to have a, a trouble with the uh, you know approval or the, or the not approval but mandating it sp specifically for very young children it's like okay you know, the disease is not going to make you very sick and usually right. unless you're, if you're a healthy young person the vaccine probably won't either uh it's just uh, not gonna make you very sick but you might be sick for a day or something right we all, right. all, all have that side effects that's why they're having a hard time then is it, it worth yeah. it if there's you know right. tiny risk from the disease tiny risk of myocarditis or whatever but also you, you maybe a substantially larger risk of just being sick for a day the way many people were if they took the vaccine is that is that even worth it? How could you how could you require that? Right? right? How could that decision be taken out of individual people and families' hands? Well, that's it's, why uh, the important part about all of this data being released and us seeing it is that it facilitates that discussion right. and the debate, which is what we should have in a democratic society. We should say, look, I want the informed consent. I want to be able to choose for myself whether or not this is a good thing for me based on all of the individual data. And I do believe that a lot of people would have absolutely still taken it and said, it's worth the risk right. for me. I'm in that age group. I'm seeing my friends die. I, I don't want to have that happen to me, so I'm going to take it. But other people could say, you know, especially these young 20-year-olds, and we saw them partying in Miami Beach at spring break right at the beginning of the pandemic, and they were criticized. And uh, you know, being not by to, me. I'm like, freedom, go. <laughs> <laughs> but they sh we should, you know, they should be able to say, look, I'm in an age group where if I catch COVID, I'm not really that at risk. And so I don't really care. Right. Uh, and so that is, you know, that is why we, that's, the, it just calls into question more of the mandate issue and just the suppression of the debate itself for people to be able to make those individual choices, I think is hopefully a lesson we learn, but I don't know. I hope we learn it. All right. Robbie, looking forward to your radar up next, I think.